way of talking about training target zones would simply be to call it something different so we could actually call this lesson the intensities of training okay so these things are kind of synonymous or meaning the same thing now we're going to start this off with a very simple equation i'm pretty sure it'd be one you've heard, heard before but let's just go over it we want to establish the way to calculate maximum heart rate okay so we're going to say here that max hr for heart rate of course that equals the figure of 220, you know, literally 220, let's, let's put in there, beats per minute, minus one's age. Okay, so we've got an equation here, and effectively we are saying our max heart rate is 220 minus your age. So if it's for you guys, I'm assuming you're either 14, 15, or 16, so let's assume um, uh, you're, you know, effectively you're 16. Of course, we would have the figure here of 220 minus 16 which of course would give us a figure of 204 okay if it was me I, as i sit and write this i'm 45 that's embarrassing to admit to but mine of course would be 220 minus 45 minus 45 and of course that's going to lead me to a maximum heart rate of 175 so let's just step back from this and realize first of all that if you and i happen to be studied next to each other on a treadmill say and we started running and we ran to our maximum whatever that speed was the top level that i am likely to get to as a 45 year old is 175 beats per minute whereas you're quite likely to be able to get your heart to beat as rapidly as 204 beats per minute so of course we're, it, the generalization here is that we lose a beat per minute as a maximum heart rate value each year of our lives okay so that's an interesting sort of principle first of all but where it gets particularly interesting is if we look at percentages of that so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to draw what we call an energy block so i'm going to draw a rectangle in here there we go and the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to get my ruler out and i'm going to drag this ruler to about here which i'm estimating is about 60 percent of this block and I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to make sure it crosses over here. And I'm going to draw a line there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that up here. And what we're going to say here is that we've got a value of 0 to zero to 60%. So let me write this in here. We've got 0 to 60%. And by the way, this is of heart rate. And this is what we would simply refer to as rest. So if we are if our heart rate is anything from zero I mean, you don't want that obviously up to 60 percent of our maximum heart rate okay what we are talking about what we are talking about here is that we are in a resting condition okay so you might want to think about that anything up to 60 percent is considered to be resting now i would also add in here that some would argue and if i just sort of uh if i just put this in uh this way if i bring our ruler back some would argue that the values from 50 to 60 percent i'll just fill this in there that these va oops that didn't work that these values here or let me just get rid of that this this area here some would argue that this is what's described as fat burning okay fat burning in other words we're doing very low intensity ex exercise and that area from 50 to 60 percent is useful for sort of for a fat burning um process now where we want to go next is we want to bring our ruler back into play and we want to say that from 60 to 80 percent so i'm going to go estimate that 80 percent is about there from 60 to 80 percent is a different zone so this zone here okay i'm going to sort of fill it in with kind of like a uh, a ready color this zone here that zone there is what we would call the aerobic zone the aerobic so i'll just write that in there this is the aerobic zone so in other words if we work at an intensity of 60 to 80 percent of our maximum heart rate we would be working aerobically and then finally what we can sort of put in as our final line in the puzzle here if i was to split this in here and to say right from 80 to 90 percent this would be about 90 percent here from 80 to 90 percent any any work that we do in this area here this is what we would describe as anaerobic development okay anaerobic work Okay, so at this intensity of exercise, we're not able to provide sufficient oxygen to power the movement aerobically. We have to do anaerobic work. So that becomes interesting because now what we can do, and actually I don't think I've got my calculator open, so uh, I might, you might actually have to watch me find my calculator here. Hang on a second, here it is. 
There we go. I've got my calculator open now. What we can, I think I have, I thought I did. <laughs> calculator, please. Oh, that's sorry, I'm pressing quick time, not calculator. That won't work, will it? So what we want to do here is I want to open my calculator, which I'm simply going to type in. There he is. That was a long-winded way of did that very badly, didn't I? So we're going to put that there. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate some heart rate training zones for you, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the aerobic zone. So the aerobic zone for a 16-year-old, 16-year-old, okay? So we want you to work at 60 to 80% of 204 beats per minute, okay? So we can calculate this. And what we can say is that the lower threshold the lower threshold, which of course is going to be the 60%, we can calculate this by saying, right, we've got 204 beats per minute multiplied by 0.6, which is of course 60%. And we can calculate that. We can say 204 multiplied by 0.6 equals, and it gives us a value of 122.4, rounded down to 122 beats per minute. Meanwhile, your upper threshold for the aerobic zone this is, your upper threshold for the aerobic zone is going to be 204 multiplied by 0.8, which is the upper limit. And that's, of course, going to give us a value of 2. Let me clear that. 204 multiplied by 80% or 0.8 gives us a value of 163.2 beats per minute. So if you wanted to engage in aerobic development, you would have to do work between these two values, okay, between 122 and 163.2. Now, there's a couple of ways of actually measuring that. Heart rate monitor is a good one. Lots of gym devices actually measure the heart rate for you. Um, there's all kinds of things like my zones, all kinds of stuff, but that is a really useful way of doing it. The only thing I would add to that is, of course, you might want to calculate your anaerobic zone. So remember, if we're doing anaerobic zone, let me just put it in here. If we're doing anaerobic, anaerobic, we know it's 80 to 90% of 204 of 204 so we know the 80% figure that's the 163.2 which is the upper part of the uh, aerobic threshold so now what we would need to do is go okay we need we need to calculate the upper threshold of the anaerobic and we would say in this case the upper would be 204 times 0.9 and of course that would equal if we grab our calculator 204 times 90% equals 183.6 so we could either say 183.6 beats per minute or of course you could write you could round it up and say 184 beats per minute in other words to work anaerobically we need to work between this value and this value now before we finish this off i just want to bring one other factor into into play and that is the intensity of circuit training. Now, yes, by all means, measure it in terms of uh, percentage of heart rate max. But if we are working in circuit training, the reality is we're probably not gonna be measuring heart rate. So how do we do that? Well, we can change intensity. Now, Edexcel would like me to tell you that we can change that intensity by altering time. I strongly disagree with this because ultimately, altering time by definition isn't altering intensity it's altering the t the first t of fit not the i but anyway ed excel would like me to tell you that more importantly they'd like me to tell you that we can change the intensity of circuit training by changing how long or short the rest period is and then we can change the intensity by changing the content i actually on an individual lesson disagree with all of these <laughs> This is not a change in intensity. I believe is one way to change the intensity of circuit training, and that is to increase resistance, okay? Because this, these two are about time, and this one's about type. This one here, the resistance, is ultimately about intensity. Nevertheless, Edexcel would like me to tell you those points, and they may well be worthy of a mark for you, so uh, I recommend you do write them down in your exam, but maybe just think about them a bit more critically. Cheers.